So I just wanted to uh, share a couple things. Um, and I'm doing it in video format because I've been so busy all day, I haven't been able to post and I have a lot of stuff to do. In fact, I'm polishing my boots right now because I have some important folks coming to my job tomorrow. Um, and I'm gonna try to make this quick because I really wanna keep it around a five minute long video. But um, some of you may know, I used to go to a church called House of Prayer Christian Churches of America. Uh, they came from uh, New Testament Christian Churches of America, which I believe came from Assemblies of God. Uh, they were a holiness Pentecostal type church which really are uh, uh, fundamental, fundamentalists when it comes to scripture, believing the Bible is literal uh, in almost every single aspect. Um, uh, they followed a strict rule set. Women didn't cut their hair, uh, long dresses, modest apparel, no jewelry, no makeup. Men, same thing, uh, no, no expensive attire, you know, uh, loose fitting clothing, so on and so forth. Um, but a lot of folks that left that church um, kind of went in the opposite direction. Now, uh, the, the, the problem I have with that is this. Okay, many of us, and almost everybody, if they were to be honest with you, would tell you that when they first met the people at that church, they saw preaching like they'd never seen before. They saw people living for God in a way that they'd never seen before. But most importantly, most of what was taught resonated in them as being true. Now, I'm not advocating what they did. I believe they went a little bit too far to the point of controlling people. And Jesus stands at the door and knocks. He does not force his way in. So whatever you decide to do, there's a lot of things that are lined out clearly in doctrine. And there's a lot of gray areas. Okay? Scripture lines out a lot of things. But again, there are a lot of gray areas. And I believe that's because you have to follow Jesus because you're responsible to God for what you do. Um, but it's not for other people to compel you. There are scriptures that are very clear. Don't fornicate. Don't commit adultery. Don't lie. Don't cheat. Don't steal. Don't commit murder. You know, don't be a pedophile. These are very clear scriptures. Homosexuality, marriage is between one man and one woman. The Bible is very clear about that. Very clear. Um, so those things that you can build doctrines off of, you know. But there are things like watching television or watching, you know, TV shows. Like in House of Prayer, we didn't have TV. We didn't have TV in there. We didn't, uh, in our houses. We didn't have internet in our houses. You could use internet for work. We didn't have internet on our phones because they didn't want you to be tempted with lust and watch pornography. Um, but I have television in my house and I don't watch, I have internet on my phone. I don't watch pornography because I don't want to. God took that out of my heart. Um, I personally don't watch, uh, TV much. Uh, if I do, it's usually a video or something like that. Uh, Christian videos or, um, educational videos, psychology videos, something like that. But that's because I came to God and I told God, I want to get close to you. And I know that these things feed the flesh and not the spirit. So I'm trying to be as spiritual as I can. And that's for what God has impressed on me to do because I want to serve him. That's because I want to. I don't need to throw the TV out for that. Okay? Um, but back to the point. A lot of folks that left House of Prayer, this church, they turned completely away. And there are things that just because House of Prayer taught is a doctrine, they say, well, if House of Prayer taught it, and they don't say that, but it's in their actions. I see them posting things and saying things. Well, if House of Prayer taught it, it must not be true. No, the Bible is still the Bible, and you're still responsible. It doesn't matter what everyone else does. And you see that throughout Scripture. There are many false prophets. Well, how do you know who a false prophet is? You build a relationship with Jesus. You go to God earnestly and honestly in prayer, and you read the Scriptures, and you follow the conviction of the Holy Spirit. That's what you have to do. It's paramount. That's how you, and the more you learn about Scripture, the closer you get to God. And Scripture is huge. That's how you know what people are. Or lying whether they're teaching something that's false the more scripture you know the better chance you have of being able to tell and the holy spirit will show you that's what that's his job that's what he's here for but um the point is is that if you went to house of prayer or you you know went to any church and you've seen someone who's a hypocrite someone who lied i don't care if you were a jehovah's witness i don't care if you were mormon i don't care what you were just because they lied to you and just because they hurt you does not mean that the Bible's not true. It does not mean that God is not true. It does not mean that God is not real. And specifically, if you were from House of Prayer, just because they told you to throw the TV out doesn't mean there wasn't some merit in what they were saying. Just because they taught doctrines. And there are some, again, that are very clearly outlined in the Bible. And, uh, you know, that's between you and God. But if you're ignoring Scripture, that's to your own, you know, that's to your own detriment. As to your own damage, your relationship with God, especially if you're in the ministry. If you're in a ministry, you better be following the word of God to the T. Because the Bible says that it would be greater judgment for you. So, um, 
regardless of all that, no matter where your state is, I, I hope that this video encourages you some. Uh, I know what I've been doing. Like I said, I get uh, every day I try to follow you up in the morning. I pray, I read my Bible, try to start the day with that. And God's really been helping me. And throughout the day, God works with me. He's a very merciful and loving God, but you got to go to him. All right. Um, but build that relationship with him. Because you're responsible between you and God. It doesn't matter what other people do. What matters is what is your relationship with God. You go to God because you know he's real. You know he's real. In your heart, you know. You may not tell people that. You may profess to be an atheist. You may profess all these other things. But if you were to be honest, you know there was a time in your life, multiple times in your life, where he spoke to you, where he dealt with you. Maybe not with loud words in your ear, but he impressed on you that he was real. I know because I felt the power of God when I was a young age. And it was absolutely undeniable. It was not emotionalism. And since then, I've known that God is real. Um, but again, I encourage you to, regardless of what churches have taught you, regardless of what anybody else says or what anybody else does, go to him in prayer. Pick up your Bible. Earnestly and honestly and sincerely give it a good effort. And God will be merciful to you. He'll meet you. He'll, he'll take care of you. Trust me, it works. You guys take care.